despite many treatment options being on the market as treatments, the reality is that most of them just address one pathway in the body and can even precipitate other issues that is then needed to be addressed with adjunct treatment. What is up guys and welcome back to Alpha Mode. Today we have an exciting topic to explore. CB0301, also known as Brisula. This synthetic steroidal anti-androgen is gaining attention as a potential treatment for androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness. With differing options circulating about its efficiency, I took it upon myself to conduct a review on CB0301. Before we dive into the details, let's grasp the essence of CB0301 and what makes it unique in the realm of hair loss treatments. CB0301 is a topical anti-androgen primarily aims to prevent further hair loss rather than promote hair regrowth. Its specific target is the androgen receptors on the scalp, which is associated with male pattern baldness. But unlike systemic treatments like finasteride or dutasteride, CB0301 doesn't interfere with hormone levels. Instead, it competes locally at the androgen receptor sites, making it a potentially attractive option for those concerned about hormonal side effects. So let's try and explore CBO301's effectiveness and how it fares in comparison to other popular topical antiandrogens like IU58841. Now, based on my personal experiences and extensive research, CB0301 exhibited mild effectiveness as a topical antiandrogen. While some users found it more tolerable than IU58841, others, including myself, found IU58841 to be the more potent in hair loss prevention. One significant downside about CB0301 is its cost. It is substantially more expensive than alternative treatments that are equally as efficient with, if not just more. So it's up for you to decide whether you want to spend the extra bucks on a treatment that is FDA approved compared to some of the other ones. And like any hair loss treatment, CB0301 has its limitations and factors to consider before use. Clinical trials results regarding CB0301's ability to prevent and even reverse hair loss aren't really that impressive. It appears to excel more as a maintenance drug rather than a robust regrowth solution. Additionally, the higher daily dosages required to potentially achieve maintenance can be, financial, can, can be a financial burden for many users. So how strong is CB0301 binding affinity and what can you expect from it? CB0301 exhibits a significant lower binding affinity for the androgen receptor compared to something like IU58841 or even DHT. Is it the most effective option? No. However, it is tried and true and has a fairly predictable side effect profile with lots of human clinical and anecdotal data to refer to. Keep in mind, treatment options have a compounding effect in protection and there can be many pathways to address. For example, if you are just using finasteride to inhibit the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, Sure, you will knock out a fair chunk of your systemic and scalp DHT. But what are you doing to protect you from the rest of the unaddressed DHT? And what are you doing to address the massive spike in scalp testosterone that comes along with inhibiting the 5-alpha reduction of testosterone into DHT? Despite many treatment options being on the market as treatments, the reality is that most of them just address one pathway in the body and can even precipitate other issues that is then needed to be addressed with adjunct treatments. Remember, DHC isn't the only androgen in the body that causes hair loss. And this is why topical anti-androgens have such a therapeutic promise, just like CB0301 has. While there's a lot of debate whether IU58841 is causing heart problems down the road, 
CB0301 has achieved FDA approval, uh, FDA approval and is considered to be a safe drug to use against hair loss due to male pattern baldness. IU5841 has been associated with a lot of different claims from people regarding the side effects. And the problem is that studies using IU5841 is very scarce. On the other hand, CB0301 has gone through extensive research and while it carries some downside compared to IU5841, it, is also, it also carries massive upsides of being a very safe drug to use against hair loss. And for the dosages, since there's a ton of data out there explaining the dosages is going to be pretty straightforward. The trial, which was completed by Cassiopeia, included 400 men and four different dosages of Clascosterone, also known as Prisula or CB0301. For the treatment of androgenic alopecia, the different doses included there was 2.5%, 5%, 7.5% solution twice daily and a 7.5% solution once daily. The men who received the highest dose of Bresula, which was 7.5% applied twice daily, of course they showed the most positive hair growth effect. The observation is referred to as a dose response, meaning that the higher dose of the drug resulted in a more significant hair growth, which is pretty common sense if you ask me. This is an encouraging sign for Brisula's potential as a hair loss treatment. The trial measured an improvement in the targeted area hair count and compare with a placebo group over the course of 12 months. The average improvement in hair count for the different Brasula dosages groups were as following. 2.5% solution group got 10.2 new hairs, 5% group got 13.8 hairs, 7.5 group twice daily got 14.3 hairs and the 7.5 solution group once daily got 12.7 hairs. So as you can see it is dose dependent but there is certainly evidence that the 2.5% solution also carries some effect. After a comprehensive assessment of CB0301's potential and limitations here's my final verdict. CB0301 does show promise as a hair loss prevention treatment but it, it is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Several more cost-effective alternatives have better efficiency already exist. Taking a proactive approach to hair loss prevention is crucial and combining CB0301 with other treatments may yield more robust results in the long run. It is also important to note that while IU5841 is being the stronger version on the market for the time being, CB0301 does carry a much better safety profile compared to the lack of studies on IU5841. If you decide that CB0301 is the right treatment for you, you can get it at anagenink.com and if you use the code alpha mode at checkout, you get a 10% discount on the whole site. There's also links in the description down below for the product if you have, dif if you have any difficulties finding it. So there you have it, a comprehensive review of CB0301. Remember, individual experiences may vary, so consult a healthcare professional before starting any hair loss treatment is essential. If you have any experiences or insights on CB0301, share them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more informative content on hair care and health. Thanks for joining me today and until next time, take care of your hair, stay informed and embrace the journey to maintaining a healthy and vibrant mane. I'll see you soon.